Atari, 102,000 of our closest friends. This is SEC Saturday night from the home of the 12th man, Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. South Carolina looking for its first ever win against Texas A&M in a series that was born when the Aggies entered the SEC. And the Aggies with a win tonight would continue to impressive stretch, having not had a losing season since they joined the Southeastern Conference. Only the elite can say that. And we're off in Aggieland. No return for South Carolina. This is Dowdle, and he's got a huge hole on the right side. And a South Carolina first down on a gain of 13 on the first snap. And that Dowdle last week had fewer yards and carries. 14 carries, 9 yards, and now out of the backfield. And he's able to take it for 6. How can the short passing... Back to Dowdle. First three plays, it's been all Rico Dabble. The first time he's held for no gain. Anthony Hines, the third. Pressure coming, and it's incomplete and almost picked off of the hand of Charles Oliver. On a football, nobody was there with their eyes on Ryan Holinsky for a quick hop route. Beauty of a punt from Joseph Charlton. Anaya Smith, the freshman, takes it inside the five. Wrong decision. He gets swallowed up. And this is going to be fantastic field position after a 52-yard punt. And AM will keep it on the ground. Isaiah Spiller finds two. DJ Wadham with the stop. You know, we talked 10th in the conference in rushing yards per game. Mon swings it out to the talented tight end, Jalen Watermeyer. And he picks up a first down on a gain of nine. Jay Sternberger now at the Packers head. Carolina brings four. Mon, a little bit high, a tad behind. Javon Osmond has it and picks up five. Quarterback run. Mon to the outside. He had some road graders paving the way. It's a pickup of 11. Mon keeps it and wants to throw. What a catch! It's Taylor Watermeyer again. And it's another Aggie first down on a gain of 23. Pocket collapsing. Mon lost the football. And AM able to fall on it. Dan Moore Jr. out of Beaumont is able to find it and save AM. From a massive issue, and Mon slow to get to his feet. I think we've seen enough injuries to quarterbacks in the league for a day. It looked like DJ Wanham at the top of your screen there, knocking the ball out of Kellen Mon's hands. That's, that's after further review, number six for South Carolina targeted. He will be disqualified. Will penalize 15 yards from the previous spot. Will be automatic first down. Matt's audio wasn't working on that last cut in. So, Matt, we heard the officials say it was targeting. Tell us in the audience why. Yeah, this is textbook targeting. The defender came in, he lowered his head, which is the indicator. There was definitely an attack, and the crown of the helmet made contact, made forcible contact right to the sternum area, as Jordan mentioned. Uh, I am not surprised at all that this was confirmed or called from the booth. Yep. Here's Isaiah Spiller. Miller picks up. Hey, he had a big game against. Well, get downhill, and he's a really good back. And here's Spiller again. Last time out, Spiller tied an AM freshman rushing record. Here's Spiller again. And Spiller gets brought down after a couple. Kobe Smith, first one there for South Carolina. AM. Better keep an eye on Kellen Mond and his legs. Mond looking left side. Great catch by Spiller. And he's taken down at the 11. Only three that time. Mon scans. He got dropped. He turned to look to his right. And he looked right at Kingsley Enigbari. It's a loss of seven. Boy, and this is just 
This is what it is, just beating your man one-on-one. -on -one. Watch this right here. He's going to be on Kenyon Green, the talented true freshman guard, and he just rips him out of the way. That's big boy football right there, man-on-man. -man. This will big be a 35-yard attempt for Seth Small. And he punches it through. A 10-play, 78-yard drive. But with the exception of losing to Star Auburn, Seth Small kicks it away. Xavier Leggett with a chance for a return. Leggett to the 20. And gets dragged down at the 24. Cole, what he got? That's a good chance. <laughs> Could have just spent some time in the film room. Helinski over the middle, wide open. And a chance to run after the catch for Travis Dawkins. It's a gain of 21. We talked about... Dowdle. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. Buddy Johnson and a bunch of his buddies in there. They'd like to lean on the gap scheme. We'll see if they can handle it early, early in this game. Dowdle ripped down from behind. Justin Matabike is in there for a loss of four. You were back and what? And incomplete. When you watch that app film, that Appalachia are upset at home on Halloween night. We've got a bunch of movement, and we got a hanky on the ground. Before the snap, false start offense. Number 24, five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Just a country and punting behind a couple of SEC punters, including AM's guy, Braden Mann. Here's the nice Smith. He's got room. And a shake at the 40. Smith, the freshman, showed his promise on that one after a bad decision on the first punt return. Something special. And those came on back to back plays. Mon gets taken down again. Another sack for South Carolina. It's Enik Bari again. Had some help with Javon. Mond is four for four, but he's been sacked twice. He's five for five now. And Weidermeyer, his key target. That time, the test. On third and nine, Mond down the sideline. His first miss of the night. Kendrick Rogers, the, the reigning Ray Guy Award winner at a school that produces loads of punters. What a deke by J.C. Horn. He ran all the way outside the opposite hash. And Alinsky looking for a deep ball. Good touch, and that is complete to Shai Smith. Deep down the sideline, and it goes for 41. And with no Brian Edwards for South Carolina. Alinsky swings out. A lot of room on the sideline now. And Kevin Harris gets taken down. Has lost one of its most dynamic players. Helinski finds his tight end. That's Kyle Markway. It's a pickup of 11. And this is where Ryan Helinski's at his best. Playing with tempo. And Brian McClendon dialing up easy, conceptual throws. Things that don't change. The read is one, two, three every time. Shot. End zone. Off the hands. Of the intended receiver, Leggett, the freshman. It's out for at least one play. Joiner, the backup quarterback, is in in the backfield. Helinski harassed, and that one's incomplete. Chased by Michael Clemens. Dowdle flips. They get it off. Joiner's got Dowdle the block, and he needed somebody else. He found nothing. Drifting right, but it'll stay true. And South Carolina has tied the game on a seven-play, 63-yard drive. Completion to Shai Smith. No chance for a return. This is a big game. Oh, yeah, conviction in that statement. Which So then the question is, and here's Spiller, and he's got another big one. Spiller bounces it outside. And Spiller slow to get to his feet. He got popped out by Jamie Robinson. I think every time you put out a message, Spiller 
flip. Pardon me. That's Cordarian Richardson with a gain of nine. Let's go back to the studio, Dari. All right, Tom. Ole Miss is on the board. You know John Rice Plumley and his ability to run will get his as he takes that into the end zone. He's run for 46 yards, but it's a 28-7 Tiger lead. All right, Dari. Thanks. A&M still has LSU on the scheduled Thanksgiving weekend. If form holds, that'll be the third number one team that they will face this season. That's never happened before college football. Here's Spiller back into the game, and he gets bottled up and finds nothing. Board against him. Two yards for Kellen Mon on the sneak, and a Texas A&M first down. Squeak by in games like this if you're going to be a team that's going to win championships in the West. Spiller straight ahead is able to find three. Cole, we were talking about that. Yes. Well, they've got their hands full here, averaging five and a half yards per play. This is Mon dancing through the line. And Kellen Mon finally brought down by JT Ebay after a gain of six. And these. Man comes on late on third and two. Spiller spills this to the outside. He's got an Aggie first down on a run of 18 yards. And again, watch the misdirection here. You're going to see a tight end come all the way across the line of scrimmage. That's going to grab the eyes of the linebackers just a little bit. And then Spiller is able to bounce it on the outside for a big game. South Carolina once again running personnel off and on a little bit late. Here's a dangerous area of the field for play action. We've seen a few successful runs back to back to back. Mon play action lobs in zone touchdown for Darian Richardson. Great call partner. It's a 17 yard lob for the score. Came after seven consecutive runs. Seth Small adds the point after. We got our first touch. It's 14 3. Baylor guys after one no comment well, that please. would be that would be big but would surprise me Matt rule might be the next hottest coach next to Lincoln Riley and the folks who play on Sundays have taken notice of what he's done down on Waco TJ Brunson ejection came early cost South Carolina one of its most dependable defenders Ryan Helinski will go ahead and scramble for it it came on the sixth play of the game but we don't get the reps. It's tough to see sometimes. Indeed. Second and seven. Rico down. A loss of football. And South Carolina falls on it. Jordan Rhodes making. Safety coming pressure. And it's incomplete. South Carolina 0 for 4 on third down tonight. And I Smith should have room for a return. It takes an Aggie hop. We got a flag on the near side of the field after a 36 yard punt. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 28, penalized 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. When I first got to Auburn. How did that work out for you? Mm, pretty intense. <laughs> Here's Mond. And the play action, oh my goodness, right off the hands of the defender. And a, Interception was sitting in the left. Jimbo yesterday recounted the story how he introduced Muschamp to Saban. Out of the backfield, it's the tight end. Weidemeyer's got room. What a nifty move, and he takes it into South Carolina territory on a 31-yard catch and run. Dude's got wheels. Yeah, he is athletic, man. And again, a little play action in the backfield catches the eyes of Jamar Brown, the true freshman linebacker, and gives Weidemeyer the space. And he's special when the ball's in his hands. Georgia said, yeah, no coach, it's okay. He played at Georgia. He hates Georgia Tech. It's okay. Mon flicks it out. It's Weidermeyer again. And another big play. So during that practice, Muschamp. Mond has it. And he's got a stiff arm. Dragged down by DJ Wanham. Brown. Only four quarterbacks in the power five has been as durable. And diverse as he has. Courtney Davis on the catch. 
gain of three. Careful on a receiver. This defense is going down. Pressure on third down. Mon on a crossing route. He finds Anaya Smith, and we'll see if that's enough. Spot will be good for a Texas A&M first down. Don't think his bangs would get in the way. Four-man rush. Mon. Oh, that was out of bounds, but what a sensational catch by Israel Mukwamu, who picked off Jay just being good enough to keep Georgia out of the college football playoff. Mon looking for a throwback. Couldn't get set, and so he sends it to a yell leader. Mon. This fires on that one. Either that or the freshman Anaya Smith ran the wrong route. And the throw could be way off. Small from 42. Starts it left, leaves it left. And a missed opportunity for Texas A&M. It's an amazing package of movies, sports, and shows. Go to ESPNplus.com to sign up now. I got two words for you. Baby Yoda. What is that? The left tackle is playing receiver. He's not moving very well. That pass is complete. He would have been <laughs> ineligible out there. <laughs> right, it's a gain of 10. Cole, what's... Kevin Harris picks up three. With seven catches per game. Unavailable tonight. Helinski finds Harris. And Harris stays on his feet. It's a gain of nine. Backward pass, time for another, and that is a strike to the tight end. Chai Smith delivered it, and then it got jammed by O'Neal, and it came out. Hit him so hard, he lost his towel. Well, Brian McClendon said, we're going to see a whole bag of tricks trying to get things going on offense. It's a really good throw, but just an even better play. By the safety here, recovering. Oof. Leon O'Neal Jr. On second and ten, Helinski to the slant, and that one's incomplete. Third and dime box. Floated to the tight end, Markway. He is swallowed up immediately by Charles Oliver. It's only a gain of one. Five. Joseph Charlton to Anaya Smith. Great hang time. Smith asks for fair catch, and he takes it at the 10. This is Courtney Davis. And it's a gain of eight. On second and two, Isaiah Spiller. You know, Jordan, you mentioned those. Started this game 11 of 16, and he'll throw here, and there's Davis again. And Davis gets ripped down by Ernest Jones, a gain of five. Cole, do you think they would be back? Almost right down the middle. Option look. Mine will keep it, and he got stuck. It's Ernest Jones again, their leading tackler. Defense. Batted away, and a flag on it. Mukwamu. Ooh, mcquam has got to be careful. He is not happy, and he's letting the officials know about it. But he left a starting linebacker. Can't afford to lose him. Pass interference, defense, number 24. The ball will be placed at the spot on the ball. Automatic first down. Here's a look. That's a whip route on the outside, so Osmond's going to fake in. He's going to try to pull out. That's that little tug right there. Quickly to the left and through an accurate pass to Osmond in the slot. Mon to the outside, and that one's complete for another Aggie first down. Anaya Smith. Last play, a clean pocket. This play under duress with pressure on his backside. That's a big boy throw. I mean, one of the reasons that people are saying, you know, Kellen could have an option to go to the NFL after this year. I don't think he will. But those type of throws from the opposite hash all the way across the field on target under pressure, those are the throws you have to make at the next level. Talked about them being maybe more effective as a pass first. That's what they're doing on this drive, the two minute of the set. Again to throw. Pocket collapses. Mon is going to take off. 
Mon's got room. He's got it to the 15. And he takes it all the way down to the 13-yard line. A scramble of 24 against the pressure. They'd love to repeat that. Mon takes a shot and it's batted down. That time the coverage by Jamie Robinson. Mon has time and that's incomplete. Osmond, Parmi, Kendrick, Rogers, and if they want him. Mon looking for Courtney Davis in the end zone. Overshot him. There's an accurate throw there. 30 yard attempt. And it's good. So Seth Small able to add to the Texas A&M leads. That horns down was illegal. It might flag the band if it was a Big 12 crew. Helinski skips it low. Got a great punter. They'll run it. A&M will use the timeout. And they'll force a punt with 13 seconds left. <laughs> hey, if you can read lips there, he's a little confused as we are. Yeah, unplug that, Cole. Just tackle it. My favorite part might be the security guy looking at me and asking me what to do. <laughs> I they got it! Charlton evades it. Now he'll run, and South Carolina picks up the first down. Wow, he had two Aggies right in front of him, including Keldrick Carper, and it turns into an 11-yard run for the punter. Wow. Look at this play. I mean, it is blocked. If that is kicked, it is... Oh, the little whoop. Oh, See ya. Lucy, Charlie Brown, what happened? He almost slides too soon, too. I mean, he's not used to running that football. They, they spot that at the start of your slide. He just barely gets it. Timeout, South Carolina. Way deep, all the way back inside the five. They rush three from just one side. See if Helinski's got the strength. They'll go underneath and out of bounds, and it'll help pad the stats, but it will bring an end to the first half when they catch by Chandler Farrell. Texas A&M runs 41 plays in the first half. They average six yards per play, but they're held to just one touchdown. A couple of red zone stops for Will Muschamp's South Carolina defense. Plays, but really where they miss him is the short throws on the outside. I mean, that's why he's the career reception leader for South Carolina, the quick throws that keep the sticks moving early in drives. A very neat custom adopted by the Aggies in the 12th man here at Kyle Field as Anaya Smith takes this kick return all the way up to the 24-yard line. You may know about it. Kyle Helinski's brother Tyler, former quarterback at Washington State, and Emily Ivey, a Texas A&M graduate and a South Carolina graduate, has degrees from both schools, posted this on Tex Ags. And no surprise that the Aggie faithful would adopt the movement that was launched in Columbia this year. Holding up number three. Tyler's number to honor him and to bring attention to it. Helinski's hope is the charity has been launched by the family. We got a flag on the play on a run to the right side from Isaiah Spiller. Holding offense number 85, 10 yard penalty, first down. Good call. Mine to the slant, incomplete. Let's check in with Cole. Fellas, I talked to South Carolina head. The freshman Spiller picks up two. Watermeyer among those polling. And Spiller stopped again to gain it just one. Looks like South Carolina made an adjustment at the half. Brain Mann, the nation's best punter. And we got a flag before he can get it off. Before the snap, false start, number 22, kicking team. Five yard penalty. Down. A low one. And man will get a hop to make it more respectable, but the nation's best punter was in on his best. Well, it turns into 52. 
Helinski on play action. He was pressured, and it's incomplete. Oliver had the coverage. Pick up six, seven, or eight. Will Muschamp was pretty sure he saw defensive holding at the least, if not pass interference in that play made by Charles Oliver, but he didn't get the flag. There's Rico Daddle. Incomplete. Coverage from Devin Morris, and the Gamecocks will be forced to punt it away. Beautiful punt. Smith pushed all the way back inside the 10. Stays in bounds. And he takes it to the 30 yard line. 58 yard punt, but 22 on the return. And on November 18, 1999, at 2.42 a.m., the construction of the bonfire stack that would be lit the following week collapsed. 12 Aggie students were killed, another 27 injured. And one week later, A&M would upset fifth-ranked Texas. 14 unanswered points in the second half. It was the single most emotional college football game ever played here. That team honored at the half. And one of those members standing by with Cole down on the sideline. Tom, I've got quarterback Randy McCowan from that 1999 Aggies football team. You were honored with a couple of your teammates out here. As football players, it's always cool getting back together with your teammates. What's so special when you get back together with that particular group? Well, it was just the, the magnitude around that situation. You know, there were so many factors at play that week. And to be with those guys, you know, it was one of those things we felt like nobody wanted to talk about how we needed to win to kind of help the healing process. And it was just the pressure that led up to that week that, you know, those guys, what we went through that with and pulled through the game, had a victory, and it just was, you know, now when you come back and you celebrate it, it's just very special. Take us back to that week of practice. What was prep relation like when you were dealing with the loss of some of your classmates? Well, it was kind of an unspoken everybody knew what was what we were dealing with and what, what we kind of felt like we kind of had to do but nobody was speaking on it you know and so uh, there was a tremendous amount of pressure I can remember after the game uh, my younger brother played for SMU at the time hit them and SMU or TCU were playing and uh, just falling asleep in the middle of that game after it because it was just such a pressure had been lifted and so but uh, it was just a, it was just a heck of a week. Randy you mentioned some of the things that you felt like you and your teammates had to do there was a day that you skipped practice because you and your teammates felt like you needed to be over at the site of the accident to help. Can you tell us about that? Well, that was a lot of seniors kind of got together. And of course, Coach Slocum at the time, you know, you just had a team that was all on the same page. And that was, we had a lot of success that year because guys were on the same page. And so we get together and decide, you know what, we need to go do what we can, you know. And when we found out that they were moving the logs manually, you know, as football players, we felt like, hey, we're, we're the most qualified on campus to lend a hand. And when they allowed us to, it was just a very moving moment to see what we could do when we all pulled together. Randy, thank you so much for the time. Sure thing. Thank you. Tom? Yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously emotional any time that they look back on it. And it's a legacy of that team. And we talked to Mac Brown about it <clears throat> numerous times. And Mac has said, listen, we're the fifth-ranked team in the country. I want to win every game. But I knew at that time that that was what was best for Texas A&M. You don't hear rivals talk about that way. No, and you don't really hear a coach kind of humble himself and realize that the game is just a game, and there's certain things that are so much bigger. So Mac Brown's humility in that moment to know that that's exactly what Texas A&M needed to heal, it's pretty impressive. It just shows you. The ruling on the field is an incomplete, incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. Horn won't attempt to return. This one is going to roll inside the 10. It'll be inside the five before all is said and done. A 55-yard punt. Well, speaking of that day back in 1999, that fateful day throughout all of Aggie Land, R.C. Slocum and Mac Brown had to decide: Is this a football game we want to play? Here's the former Aggie coach. I thought we could draw strength from each other by playing the game, and I wanted to keep my players here so I could be around them and help them get through this. And uh, I thought it'd be helpful for the Aggie family to come together. So obviously, not just an emotional game, but the fact that RC and the players talked about the idea that you can't go out there as a coach and say, we need to win this game, because then if you don't, you feel like you left it, let the entire community down. But that comeback against Major Applewhite in Texas turned into Perhaps the most notable win in AM history. South Carolina backed up. And the freshman Kevin Harris finds four yards. 
Now here's where if you want, you can really start to push the tempo. And Brian McClendon moved a few games ago from the sideline to the box for this very reason, to use tempo. There's a tight end counter, Markway. And Markway gets shoved forward for another couple. It's a gain of 15. So McClendon being up. Helinski is able to dump it out, but it's incomplete. The freshman Kevin Harris got a bit turned around. Just a little too hot. And Michael Clemens getting to Helinski from behind. You can tell the plays that Helinski's comfortable. Pressure. And it's knocked down by Oliver. They're trying to find to carry and Joyner. And that pressure got it almost on the sideline. He's your best receiver right now. No, Brian Edwards. Got to get him in space. You know, Smith has been battling some injuries. Flags come flying from all directions. And I as Smith takes it to midfield. He has been electric in the return game. 46 yard. During the, during the kick, holding on the receiving team, number 28. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Trend to keep this close. Mon hands it off to Spiller. And he'll be ridden out of bounds by Jamie Robinson. On second and two. Nice move. And Isaiah Spiller picks up a first down. J.C. Horn at the stop. Needed two, got five. Spiller trying to find the edge. Wow. Jamie Robinson brought the lumber. Almost did. Here's second and eight. Spiller out of the backfield. Escorted out by Ernest Jones, a gain of five. Pulled up against four rushing. They need three yards. Mon shuffles his feet. Now he's chased. He's dragged down and flicks it incomplete. But it's Aaron Sterling who brought the pressure that time. Braden Mann again. Ooh. That is a rarity for the reigning Red Guy Award winner. Never have back to back winners in that award. 50% of his passes for 148 yards. That one's incomplete. It was a forward pass. Nicely in a perfect position. Zelensky airs it out into coverage. It is incomplete. Caldrick Carper. History 104,957, and they're up for this third and ten. And it's another third down stop by Texas AM. Justin Matta BK dirtied Helinski's jersey. BK, right here, is just gonna absolutely beat Jordan Rhodes right off the snap. Helinski's got a guy that's gonna come open there. I mean, that's a just gingerly when it got up. We'll wait and see if that might have an effect on him. Fair catch taken. Kellen Mon on a quarterback draw. They turn him around in the backfield, and he's still able to rip off seven. Needed two, got three. Spiller again, and that time six yards. Spiller vacates. They go to him out of the backfield. What a fantastic job by R.J. Roderick to fight off the block, and he holds Spiller to no gain. Or right, or get bull rushed. And he got there. He got to Mom, but Mom got it off complete to Osmond. It's going to turn into a huge game for Texas A&M. Kellen Mond standing tall in the face of pressure. It goes for 27 yards. And Javon Kinlaw took his offensive lineman, Colton Prater, all the way back into Kellen Mond. Look at this. I mean, that's the power and the size. But look at the throw by Kellen Mond. I mean, he can't even finish his throwing motion, but it's right on the money to Osmond. As they... Spiller again, the freshman. And he's able to pick up nine. JT eBay takes him out of bounds. Second and one. Incomplete. 
fullback next to Mon. Spiller stood up. He got the first down. Jared Hocker at left guard move. Before the, before the snap, false start offense, number 73, five yard penalty, first down. Although it compliments his eyes. I don't know, clashes a little bit. Oh, you don't agree? Movement again. Before the snap, false start, number 85 offense, five yard penalty, first down. Complete to Courtney Davis and a Texas A&M gain of 15. That's how the third quarter will come to an end. Mond over the middle. It's Courtney Davis again. It's a gain of 17. It's the exact same play they just ran. And they're just leaving way too much space for Courtney Davis. Look, you got outside leverage. They're kind of bracketing this guy. But look at all the space right here. You can't give an athlete and a caliber, a high caliber receiver like that, that much space at the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Spiller straight ahead finds four. DJ Watt on the stop. Mon looking in zone. Comeback route. And we got a flag in the play. And the Pass to Jamon Osmond. Pass interference, offense number two. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. They got to Mon. Didn't go down at first. Oh. And it runs a one hopper and incomplete. DJ Wanham was the first. Javante of the drive. Nowhere to go for Isaiah Spiller. Since the start of the second quarter. Seth Small from 40. Got the leg and he splits the uprights. Small, the sophomore from Katy, Texas. Two of three tonight. He's opened up Texas A&M's advantage. 16 to three Aggie. No return for South Carolina. Helinski. Incomplete, trying to find Chad Terrell. And let him make a play. Helinski only 3 of 11 in the second half for 18 yards. <laughs> Helinski looking for Smith. He hesitated on the route. And it looked like on the last three passes, Helinski and his receivers weren't on the same page. Yeah, that was zero runs, six incompletions. Back to back three and outs. And I have Smith receives a punt and is immediately dropped a 42 yard punt. Interesting development at Baylor. Three turnovers for Hertz. You know what doesn't make a whole lot of sense about that? Newark, JFK, LaGuardia. Burroughs thrown for 489 on five touchdowns. Here's Spiller. Who else is there? Jay Young will return from his suspension next time out for Ohio State as they get pinched. State. Here's Spiller to the right side, and he picks up the first down. Hey, you know, Cole, it seems like at about this time, monumental collapse for Joe Burrow not to win the Heisman Trophy. And the thing is, I mean, uh-oh. For Darian Richardson's got room to rumble. And he hit the pylon on his way down. He is ruled out. Although I got the pylon, did he step out before so? It's a 31-yard run, inches away from a touchdown. His left foot definitely comes out of bounds, but it's bang, bang to when he hits the pylon. Texas A&M, they don't care. They're going to go. And it'll be Kalamon to keep. And Mond able to take it over, I thought, but no signal. There it is, touchdown. Texas A&M. Kellerman just stole a touchdown from Cordarian Richardson. <laughs> As a quarterback, you love that. Don't let him review it. Let me just take it, coach. 70 in the opener against North Carolina. South Carolina with only 180 tonight. What? You, I thought you were the movie guy. South Carolina's going to bring it out. 
And Xavier Leggett's got trying to find room from the left side. He's in a foot race. And he hurdled man to get a few more. What a return by Xavier Leggett. 50 yards to set South Carolina up. Shai Smith. Now Leggett. Here's Rico Dowdle. And he gets dragged down by Justin Matabike. Helensky pressured. Will tuck it and slide down. It's a gain of four. There have been very few pot take shots downfield and just hasn't been there. Why not? Uh, Texas A&M doing a good job of playing coverage on the back. Just hasn't been there downfield for Helensky. Aggies came in with good numbers. Fifth best passing defense in the SEC. And Helensky off target. Yes. They have not played a whole lot of snaps in games this season. Helensky. <laughs> Batted away and a pass that was headed incomplete. As a reminder, Brian Edwards, the all time lead. Trips to the right, quick hitter to Markway, the tight end. And he's going to carry some dudes with him down to the 25. It's a gain of 14. Game. Out of the backfield, Dowdle. Makes Buddy Johnson miss and then paid the price. Depleted after a gain of just two. I didn't have any pads on, just a pair of blue jeans. Dowdle. They just short arm that one. You can't blame him because Buddy Johnson was steaming down the tracks. Another. Fourth and loud. Helinski sideline shot. Off the mark. And South Carolina turns it over on downs. One of the highest scoring games and highest yardage games in SEC history. Cole, what did you see in that Georgia-Auburn game today? The loss there, P.J. Fleck couldn't row the boat into Iowa City. They suffered their first loss of the season. And with a huge win at home against Penn State a week ago. Wow, here he goes. It's a foot race, and Cordarian Richardson wants this one. He's being tracked. They don't get him. Cordarian Richardson with a 75-yard touchdown run. Cordarian Richardson has carried the ball five times tonight. He is averaging 26 yards a carry. Country strong. He's going to climb to the second level and seal the backside linebacker, which is going to allow the cutback by Richardson here, which springs him for the touchdown. That's a 330 pound offensive lineman getting out in space and blocking the linebacker. The game cocks of the win at Georgia. Now first down, he finds Shai Smith. And Shai Smith finds nowhere to go but a flag. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 21. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Not 100% healthy, coming into a game against Georgia, and staring down the barrel. Look at that, another one, and a lick will draw multiple flags. Leon O'Neill Jr., Remember, A&M's got Georgia and LSU still to come. And the result of the play is a completed catch. Personal foul targeting number nine, defense. All right, thank you. Here's the call. After further review, there is no targeting. First down, South Carolina. Pilots. Here's Joyner, and Joyner gets stuck for no gain. Devin Morris. That's second and ten. Joyner chase, and it'll be a Texas A&M sack. Forced out of bounds by Andre White Jr. in a loss of six. Joyner unloads towards the end zone, and that one is... Almost intercepted by Charles Oliver. Through his hands. It leaves South Carolina with a fourth and 16. 
just excellent coverage by Oliver on the outside. Does a really good job of forcing Shai Smith to the sideline with his body. So he's playing the football the whole way. But right before the camera got to him, he's pushing Shai Smith with his body right there. That's great legal contact. Not going to get called for... Aggies rush only three. Joyner escapes the pocket. Got a long way to go. Makes two men miss. And Joyner gets spun around on a nasty collision that draws a flag. It's a 12-yard run. And Joyner still down. That's number 26. The previous play is under further review. Matt, we appreciate it. Here we go. After further, further review, there is no targeting. The ball carrier was short of the line to gain. It was fourth down. First down, Texas A&M. Back to Texas A&M. Foster hands it to Blumrick. It was a, a move that was necessitated by the injuries they had a running back, and they gave Connor Blumrick. Yeah, that looks pretty immediate to me. Sandage forced it, Sandage found it, and South Carolina should have an opportunity to find the end zone here. That, that ball just a little low for Blumrick. What you want to do there, when they teach ball security, you want to punch your chin. So you want to get that ball vertical, the point more vertical towards your chin. After further review, there was a fumble on the play with an immediate referee by South Carolina. It'll be first down for South Carolina at the 12-yard line. Nice catch. Kevin Harris. Gain of seven. Back of the end zone, too tall. Shai Smith. Helinski crossing routes. He goes outside, batted away by Charles Oliver. We're happy to have Oliver back. After the play, personal foul, face mask, offense. 15-yard penalty. It'll be fourth down. Charlton, the punter, is the holder. And he pushes it through from 39. Second made field goal tonight. Absolutely, especially with how good Georgia is against the run. What the quarterback design runs do, it allows you to get an extra defender to the side and to the point of attack. That Florida game was a great one for Jake Fromm. Their third down success when Georgia had the football was magnificent. Gain of four with 3.20 to go and counting. Gain of four that time. Kabote got popped coming through the hole. How about that duo they're going to have next year? Yeah. You can have Glenn Beal back with those two as well. Beal more of a blocking tight end. Connor Blumrick. High formation with Baldry, the fullback here. And the snap was dropped. Foster had to fall on it. On through for 221. He ran for another 47. Bradarian Richardson ran for 130. Isaiah Spiller ran for 129. And two guys have been on a couple staffs together meet at midfield. Jimbo Fisher finds his seventh win since Texas A&M joined the SEC. Only LSU, Alabama, Georgia, and A&M have had winning seasons each and every year. Jimbo Santa by with Cole. Coach, you go over 300 yards rushing tonight. A lot of two back from you tonight. Why was that formation able to give you so we much success? We, lost. we got momentum in the first half, and then we lost, and we went back some base things. We know how they were lining up to get a hat to a hat, and we just started executing, and then the flow got going, and we mixed it up with the counter, and then the boss, and the weak boss, and low inside run, and it just, we got going, and it got a rhythm. You told me before the game, Kellen Mond's the kind of guy that you would like to play with because of his toughness. Was tonight a perfect example of that? Well, he got hit a lot. 
He got hit a lot, made a lot of big plays, was banged up a little bit. I mean, just kept battling, and our guys believe in him. They're going to do everything. When he's leading them, they're going to follow. With what's next for you, your defensive line is going to have to play good football. They played great football tonight. How can you continue to have that performance from them the rest of the season? That's what we got to have. Our defense was the key tonight. The second half, we stunk it up offensively in the beginning, and then we got good. But then the defense was the key tonight. They were playing, and we controlled the line of scrimmage, and that was the key. They follow. With what's next for you, your defensive line is going to have to play good football. They played great football tonight. How can you continue to have that performance from them the rest of the season? That's what we got to have. Our defense was the key tonight. The second half, we stunk it up offensively in the beginning, and then we got good. But then the defense was the key tonight. They were playing, and we controlled the line of scrimmage, and that was the key. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And Jimbo Fisher and his son in victory today. And I got two tough ones coming up, Georgia and LSU. If Kellen Mond can replicate this success, and m has a chance not only for his signature win, but to spoil the college football playoff. And if Jalen Weidemeyer can have that big of a role, this Texas A&M offense complementing with the running game is going to be really dangerous. And they'll, they'll push Georgia on the outside in the perimeter. It's be a question of this defense moving forward. Well, Cole is standing by with Kellen. They might fire the cannon a couple more times, Cole, so you might need to duck. <laughs> I think we're under attack here, Kellen. Your offense put up some numbers. You were under attack all night long. How are you feeling physically after that game? Um, I'm I feel pretty banged up, but I mean, it's another SEC win, uh, another SEC play, so um, obviously it's gonna be real physical, but we were able to come out of here at home, uh, last home game of the season, and come out with a win. When the run game gets going the way that it did tonight, how does that change your attitude, your demeanor, your mindset as a quarterback? Um, just makes it a lot easier for the pass game, and uh, the running backs did a really good job tonight, both Isaiah, uh, and uh, 25 so I mean both of them did a really good job and we we're able to you know pop some big runs for us in the offense Now, when you come off a of bye week I know there's certain things that you want to try to accomplish in that first game now that you'll carry over through the rest of the season what did you work on in that off week that you know you accomplished tonight I'm um, just playing a little bit faster and uh, we knew, obviously knew South Carolina most of the time especially on third down was going to bring some blitzes so um, the receivers were able to get open on some big time routes and uh, we able to convert on those thank you Keller thank you Goal. Oklahoma is putting the finishing touches on Baylor right now. They just picked him off to likely in that game. That means there's only three undefeateds left. Kellen Mond and Texas A&M will have a chance Thanksgiving weekend to whittle that number down even further. Aggies controlled this one after some early stops by the South Carolina defense. Kellen Mond and Texas A&M notch a 30 to 6 victory. A 17 point fourth quarter for Texas A&M. All Aggies, Weidermeyer was key early, and South Carolina, through injuries and penalties, lost key players from before the game to the all the way to the end. 30 to 6 is our final for Jordan Rogers, Cole Kubler, I'm Tom Hart. Good night from College Station. It's time.